Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of Live Science with Drawing Science for Kids. I'm Brenda, your host as always. And today we're going to be talking about science tools that you can have at home that you can set up easy science experiments with your kids. Maybe you're new to science activities and you're not sure where to get started. So today I'll be kind of going over the, the basics you can have in your science kit and how you can use those to um, how you can use those to start your own science experiments. You don't have to be a science teacher to do these experiments or set up a little center in your house and it's actually really helpful for your kids in their class, in their science stuff at school, if you're doing it at home too. So we're gonna go over that today. And there is this printable that goes along with it. It's a little wet. Um, so this is just some supplies, which we'll go over later, that you can have in a little basket or something and set up a little science center in your house and it's a lot of fun to do those with kids at home. You can do them with your own kids. You can set up like a little summer camp. Uh, you can just do them after school when your kids come over, your friends' kids come over, any of that'll work. And if you wanna get a copy of this supply sheet, just leave a comment on this video and I'll send it to you. Okay, so last week, uh, Megan was asking, she wanted to know what sort of supplies we can keep at home to set up our science experiments. So that's what we're going to be going over today. And this is the list of sort of some general supplies that I came up with. Um, you can, with this particular sheet, you can do a lot with, um, with your basic, it's mainly chemistry focused because that's the easiest to do at home, with like kitchen tools, but there are some other things in there for like, Magnet experiments, you can do some physics experiments, you can do some biology, you can do some garden science um, with the supplies on this list, but it's all gonna be about for your preschool, kindergarten, and then upper, I'm um, not upper, lower elementary, up to about third grade can probably work off this list. My, my daughter's in fifth grade and she still really likes doing a lot of these experiments, but she's um, quite familiar with the, the science behind them now. She does them more just for fun. Um, so you're going to have your basic supplies, which I can't really read that that way. So um, I'll just go over them. And then I've got a little basket here. And I'll show you kind of what I keep in mind with the ones we do all the time. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want is jars. Um, I love using jars because they're glass. Um, so you can heat them. You can put them in the freezer if you're... Um, not too crazy. They will break if, if you put too much pressure on them in the freezer. So you probably don't want to use them for too many freezing experiments, but I like that you can heat them. Uh, they're kind of like flasks and beakers and like your traditional uh, science uh, equipment tools that you use a lot in the regular classroom, but they're a lot cheaper and you probably already have some. You don't have to use the official mason jar, which I prefer, but I, honestly, I just started doing this because we had a lot of mason jars at home and they were just really handy. So if you don't have a mason jar, you can use like uh, pickle jars or old, I think this one's an olive jar. Um, that works just as well. It doesn't have to be official mason jar. And if you're really in a pickle, you can use, well, some of them actually require the, some science experiments do require a more narrow opening so it helps to have like a, a glass bottle from like a soda for the ones that you can't do and it actually in a little bit I'm going to show you guys three super super simple science experiments so you can set up with your kids using the supplies in the sheet that if you have never done very many science experiments maybe you're a little intimidated by the, the mess level these are low mess and easy to do with a wide range of kids and they go over some basic um, science topics that that kids should know about and can actually pick up on pretty quickly using those experiments. Okay, so the first thing I like to keep my science equipment. Oh my goodness, my 
mic just fell over. <laughs> Oh, speaking of live disasters, um, my daughter is asleep right now, but she could wake up at any second, so she might be joining us. I know she wanted to do some of these experiments, so maybe she'll be in here in a little bit. Okay, so here is the box of supplies. It's a milk crate. You don't have to use a milk crate. In fact, it's actually not the best container because of the flat and small things fall out, which isn't ideal, but I still keep using it because I don't like change. Okay, so one of the first things that you're going to want to have, if you have nothing else, you want to have some sort of microscope. This one is not fancy, and it is not expensive, and it's not very powerful, but I, I think this one is like a Ten, I can't remember. Somebody gave this to my daughter for her birthday several years ago. And I can't remember if it's 10 or 20 or 30 times magnification. And if you are joining us, go ahead and say hello to me in the comment so I can say hello back. Um, so this is the microscope that, that we use here at home. And it's super basic. It has like a little... Well, I don't even, oh, nope, the light is working. You, you can't really see that, but the, it has a little light. And it actually does pretty good magnification. So even if you don't have any other equipment, if you get an inexpensive microscope to use at home, you can look at things in your yard. You can look at food. You can look at all sorts of things. But I also like to have these little prepared slides. I think this version, this is from Amscope. And I think this version is biology themed. So it's going to be like, what's this one? Lilium anther. I think that's a part of a flower, but I'm actually not that, even that sure of that. Uh, I think this one has like a piece of a, yeah, like here's a rabbit spinal cord. So it's just like little bits of animal parts and biological. Here's a dog muscle. So this kit's really cool. I, I got this one because my oldest daughter really was into animal biology. So I picked out the, the animal set, but there's tons of prepared slides. There's plant ones and mineral ones. And let's well, here's a pumpkin, a pumpkin, pumpkin stem. Hello. It's really difficult to see. Can you even see it in the camera? Not really. Oh, it's a little Bitty, bitty little blob there. This doesn't really zoom in. But uh, this wasn't very expensive either, and it's a pretty fun way and low mess too, which is always ideal for quick science discoveries. Just looking at stuff through a microscope can be a lot of fun, especially with the, the younger kids. So, where did my sheet go? Okay, so a microscope is definitely recommended for everybody, and Safety goggles. Everyone should have safety goggles when they're doing any sort of experiment. Even though the ones you're going to be doing at home will be kids safe, you'll want to have the, the goggles just to get kids used to putting them on and having them whenever they're doing experiments. And if you have gloves, I, I put gloves on the list. I actually don't have any right now in my kit. I should get some more. But having them wear like rubber gloves and stuff to protect their hands is also useful. Um, for small experiments, I like to have test tubes. This one, I believe, actually had one of those, like, grow your own dinosaurs in it. So it's not, it's, it's plastic. And it, it's from, like, the dollar store. <laughs> but it works super great. I, you don't, you wouldn't want to keep the plastic one, obviously. But it works really well for, like, holding up and, like, looking stuff like that and then the kids feel like real scientists and then I like to use film canisters for whenever I do the rocket explosions we've done several different versions of these little exploding rocket type things we've done a Mentos version we've done the aqua salsa version we've done regular baking soda and vinegar so there, there's a bunch of different ways you can make these pop open and explode the kids have designed different different like fins and stuff to see how far they'd go. So, so that's a, a good staple. Um, you're going to want to have a pipette 
or something like this. Uh, you can also use uh, one of those kids take eyedroppers, but I like these because they're disposable and they work really well. And I like being able to just throw them away. I'm actually about to run out right now. It, actually, these even have little, I don't think you can really tell, but they have little like measuring lines on there to show like the quantity. So that's what I like about these. You'll want to have some of those. Uh, if you can get a measuring tape or a ruler or some sort of measuring implementation, that's always a good thing to have on hand. And a calculator and a, a timer. I actually usually just use my phone for that. But it, if you want the kids to, to do their own, it's good to help teach them how to use those other tools as well, in addition to the phone. But you, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily essential to start out with. You'll also want a funnel. Mine recently broke, so I don't have one to show you, but any sort of kitchen funnel will work. But it's basically used to, when you have like your narrow opening, to pour the, the stuff in easier, and it just makes it a lot easier. And then you're going to want to have either a science worksheet, like the one that I gave you guys um, last week, or a little journal for them to write down their observations and results and that's helpful too. Um, a thermometer, I like the dig digital kind because it's faster to read. So it, it takes the temperature faster than, uh, than your like one with the glass mercury in it. And this one in particular can move from from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So that's useful for conversions if you want to take things to the next level. Then I like to include it's modeling play, which I often just use Play-Doh. And I found out a couple of years ago that Play-Doh is actually a, a conductive material. So when you're working with like circuits and stuff, the Play-Doh actually conducts electricity, which is really cool. And um, if you get regular modeling clay, like the the kind that's like plasticine, I think is one of the, the names for it, that is an insul insular one. So when you combine Play-Doh and regular modeling clay with the uh, circuit set, this will conduct electricity, the other one will stop the circuit. And so you can actually build pretty detailed circuits with that. We use a, a squishy circuits kit, which I don't have with me right now, but um, instead of making our own dough or buying the expensive squishy circuit dough, that's what we use. One, one day I'll probably show that to you guys, the, how we use that. Um, okay, they, oh, a magnifying glass, of course. That's in here somewhere. I think this one came with like a butterfly exploration set. It's dusty right now. I think it has borax powder on it. Um, we've been doing a lot of borax lately. So yeah, here's a magnifying glass. You can do so much with a magnifying glass. So honestly, if you just had a magnifying glass and a microscope, you would be good. That's all you need to start. But I, I like the other things too, because my kids like to get their hands dirty. Okay, I think that covers all the very basic ones. And then on the sheet here, I've got sort of a list of supplies that will work for preschool and kindergarten. And then there's an extra set um, that maybe you don't want the kids to have until they're older. So on the preschool list are things like eyedroppers, coffee filters, um, salt, cornstarch, um, masking tape, scissors, paper clips, um, you can use vegetable oil or baby oil. I like to use baby oil because it's clearer. It is more expensive though, so if you're wanting to cut down on costs, definitely go with the vegetable oil. Uh, sponge, you can do a lot with the sponge growing seeds, talking about expansion and absorption and um, talk about actual sponges. Um, magnets, there's this one kind of magnet that's pretty cool. And then I still like, I, I 
I really like these, the uh, horseshoe magnets. I don't, I don't know why. I think it's just a personal preference because I like the shape. I don't think there's any benefit to this one necessarily. I, I could be wrong. Um, okay, and then, oh my gosh. <laughs> forgot about that. That was for our science experiment later. And uh, I forgot. <laughs> I prepped it and then I forgot that I prepped it. Uh, there's baking soda in here because I'm going to show you the, the uh, well, it was supposed to be a non-messy science experiment. But if you forget that your balloon's full of baking soda and you fling it across the room, then it does become a messy science experiment. Um, anyway, balloons can be used for a lot of things because they, they're low cost and uh, can these illustrate a lot of different science themes. Um, if you can get the the six percent hydrogen peroxide from like a, a beauty salon, that one they'll have. Um, what am I saying? Uh, they're they're sold as like hair lighteners. So that's the one you want is the higher strength one, not the one that's used for wound cleaning. Uh, that's a more powerful hydrogen peroxide, and it works better. It makes more impressive and dramatic science experiments than the one you get from the grocery store. I actually ran out of that because my daughter liked the experiment where you mix the the yeast and the the yeast and the hydrogen peroxide. It makes like a exothermic reaction where it puffs up and then turns warm. She loved that so much that she she dumped the whole bottle in there, which was a uh, a little more expensive than I was anticipating because those bottles are like 12 bucks each or something. Uh, at least when you buy them online, they might be cheaper in the store. Um, so it's also useful to have like little containers like this just for like holding things in. These are little silicone baking cups. We like to use these for holding, measuring, just good to have. Um, you can always do things with prisms. There's a lot of light science things you can do with prisms. Um, when I bought these, they actually came in like a kit of like 10 or 20 or something like that. Uh, so that was more than I needed, but I actually couldn't find, they were a lot cheaper to buy them in bulk than they were in individually. So I'm not sure why that was. Uh, let's see. Oh, if you're gonna be making slime, you're gonna wanna have glue. I like clear because it seems to be a little less messy and more reliable. And then when I was buying the glue, I found out that Elmer's makes this like slime thickener now that's supposed to be used in place of starch. I actually haven't tested this yet. Kept meaning to, but I actually lost this in my garage and just now found it today. So it says it replaces baking soda and contact solution, which probably means it's just about exactly like laundry starch. Let's see if it smells like it. Maybe we'll test that out on another one. Okay, um, I like to use food coloring to make experiments more exciting. Um, don't do it on your wood surfaces. That's a personal story there. Um, I found these, my daughter got a crystal kit once that came with like these little rock containers and I just kept them for making crystals in because it's a lot of fun. So if you ever buy a crystal kit, you can save this stuff for future. And let's see, oh, gelatin, you can have that in your kit. Um, if you get tired of jars, you can get these little official little flasks. These, I think, are actually official. I think I got them from like a science supply store. But I honestly use my jars way more. We sh these are kind of Thin and we actually shattered a few. So that wasn't cool. Um, oh, yes, you all want alka seltzer tablets. Those make some nice chemical science things. Um, you don't have to have hairspray all the time, but right now people are doing a lot of like weather science and you can use hairspray to make the, the cloud in a jar. You put ice on top and hot water on the bottom and then you spray the hairspray and the cloud forms in the jar. Um, rubbing alcohol is always useful. I can't remember what we do with this at the moment, but we have used it recently. <laughs> and we do use it a lot. We go through a lot of it. I just can't think of it right now. 
Um, shaving cream you can do a lot with. You can make clouds with it. You can put it in your slime. You can mix it with different things and learn about the properties of aerosol cans. Um, let's see. Baking soda is useful to have on hand. Actually, this is the one for my kitchen. The one that I have for the actual science experiments. I have like 20 pounds of it. Um, use glitter to make things more fun. I like putting these in like the, the vortex science experiments. So if you're wanting to do like um, spinning vortexy centrifugal force type things, put glitter in there and it'll be clearer. Um, this is our well used starch bottle. My kids really, really like slime right now. So we've been making a lot of that. And Borax makes impressively strong crystals. We've been doing a lot of that recently too. So that's a good one to have on hand. Very inexpensive. And of course, your good old vinegar for your acid. And if you want to go farther than that, you can get things like carbon paper. You can get one of the drawing compasses, some batteries, potato clock, those really strong. Oh, I have some right here. They're really strong magnets. Um, like these little battery ones, they're not safe for little kids. So definitely only do them for the, the older kids. You can get litmus test strips, pH test strips, electrical tape, straight pens, um, all that good stuff that's here on this list. And if you leave a comment, you can um, get that sheet. Okay, so. I'm going to show you guys some super quick experiments that you can do. So maybe if you've never done an experiment at home with your kids, this is probably, these three are probably the easiest and some of my favorites to start with. So this one is one about surface tension. All you need for this is a container of water, preferably in a jar. So here we've got our jar full of water, and then you need two paper clips. So this one just shows kids how surface tension works. So the first thing that you do is you toss your, oh, I guess you need three paper clips. You toss your paper clips into the jar and it sinks. And so then you're like, okay, um, why did the paper clip sink? Can you get it to flip? And so then the kids will spend some time trying to see if maybe they can like place it more gently or at a different angle. Um, so that'll keep them busy for a little while. But the, the secret to this is to lowering it down with another paper clip. If you lower it with another paper clip, make like a little paper clip cradle. Like this. Paper clip cradle. And then you stack your other one on top like this. And then you lower it. I may not have quite enough water in here to do this. Oops. Nope. I gotta put more water in. Let's see. Hmm. Don't have any more water. I'll just maybe if I put it back in the speaker. It'll be easier. Okay, try that again. Okay, so you make a little cradle, and then, yeah, this will work. You lower it very, very slowly into the jar. And it's supposed to float. It's done that before. Well, it almost did. It could be my water's dirty or something. But if you do it right, it does float. Maybe it's because I'm holding it. No, it's not working for some reason right now, but it will work if you do it right. There we go. Ah, I did it for a second. But anyway, I think there's something wrong with the way I'm doing it. Oh, you know what? There's like scum or something that probably interfered with the surface tension. But anyway, the, the science is if you lower it in at the right angle, then the surface tension of the water keeps the the paper clip from sinking because the, the water molecules are kind of buoying it up a bit there. 
And then the next one you can do is with my fancy balloon. So I put a little bit of vinegar in here and then you fill up a balloon with some baking soda. And then I tried this with a jar and it would work except that the, the opening of the jar is too wide for the balloon. So the balloon burst. So this one, you just drop the things out in there and then it goes right up and it explodes. <laughs> so that's always a fun one because kids love explosions. And it's super easy. And if you don't put in too much baking soda like I did, then it actually doesn't explode, but it's, it's actually more fun when it does. So there you go, all the carbon dioxide gas escaping, and I'm covered in it now. But that's a fun one because that's an endothermic reaction. It's actually colder after you do it than before because the reaction uses energy instead of making energy. And the last one is the lava lamp. Last week you saw me messing around with this, and this one is really easy. You put colored water in the bottom and then you put oil on the top and then you drop in an aqua seltzer tablet i like to break them up into these little chunks so it doesn't happen too quickly or else it boils over then you just drop them in there and it starts to bubble up and kids always like this one too because it looks like a lava lamp. Let me put one more little piece in there. Now, one thing that's interesting about this is when you do it with the vegetable oil like this, it kind of turns into little bubbles. But when you do it with the baby oil, I guess it's like a thinner oil. The colors kind of mix more. So you get more color coming up with the baby oil than you do with the, the vegetable oil. So that's an interesting difference that would make a good thing to test to see which oil makes the best lava, which one is the, the most viscous. But that's always a fun one. And there's almost zero mess on this unless you knock over your, your jar here. And so those are the, the really easy ones. I'm kind of bummed that I couldn't get the paper clip one will work. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm going to try one more time. We've done this before successfully many times, so I really don't know what's going on with our setup here. I'm going to try it one more time just to see. Maybe it's what they call a ID, ID 10 T air. Okay. Oops. Now, I think it's because I'm holding it at an angle, so I'm bringing it in at an angle. Either that or there's something particularly wrong with these paper clips, but that doesn't seem right either. Ah, there it goes. Okay, yeah, you just have to do it really, really slowly and do it at the perfect angle. Let's that down. Can you see it? There it is. See? There it is, floating away. So there you go, surface tape. All right, that I think. And those are the experiments I wanted to show you guys that are really quick and easy to do at home, especially if you're unfamiliar with doing science stuff at home and are a bit nervous. So comment on the video, and I'll send a sheet to you so you can take it shopping and pick up some stuff. And a lot of times what I do is I'll buy a few different supplies. Every time I go to the the grocery store just add a couple more in there and that makes it to where you're not paying like two hundred dollars for for your science center at once and then keep it all in one place like in this crate but preferably not like this crate because stuff falls into your lap well i think that wraps it up for today so if you have anything that you want me to cover in a future live just give me a comment let me know and we will see you next week. I think probably next week I'm going to be talking about um, some fun, different science experiments you can do with, with peeps. We have a lot of peeps at our house right now. 
and there's a lot of fun sciencey things you can do with them so we'll probably be doing that next week so i'll see you guys then and let me know if you have any questions or want me to cover anything else in the future y'all have a great week bye